Yesterday, John Heyman of the New York Post reported the Red Sox loom as a real threat to sign Shohei Otani. Hmm. A real threat. This is including the opinion of a executive with an interested team that said he believes they're a real threat. This is an executive of another team that has interest in Otani that is telling Heyman, look out for the Red Sox in this thing. Don't count them out. I don't know what that means. I don't know how valuable that is. I would assume that any team with money would be a threat in this regard. Like they could get any team could get involved and throw an offer at Shohei Otani. I'm more interested in, does he have any interest in playing here? Does he? Is he interested in that? And until we hear that from, you know, one of his people, I don't know how excited I'm going to get about this. And the reality is he already turned you down once. He wasn't even willing to sit down and have an interview with you. And you were willing to throw everything at the guy. I think one thing you look at here in the teams we talk about, like the Red Sox, the Dodgers, the Mets, the guy who got Shohei Otani to the Angels in the first place, Billy Epler with the Mets, he resigned yesterday. So he's no longer going to be with that organization. I'm not telling you the Mets still can't throw whatever money it is at him, but that is one of those relationships that a lot of people thought could be important this coming off. So, Tyler, you would rank them one, two, three, those teams that were forementioned there, and then Red Sox being fourth. Uh, I would probably put it, I still think the Dodgers are easily the number one here. I agree. West Coast, we know that's his preference, and they've been waiting years, even though they couldn't get under the luxury tax. Maybe that changes this year, and they say, we couldn't pull it off because of the whole Trevor Bauer situation. Now we need to. It's just nothing points to that, and they need pitching. I still think the Red Sox, I'd put them third. Dodgers one, Mets two, Red Sox third. And I think the Mariners are the team that doesn't get any or doesn't get talked about at all in this. The way they acted at the All-Star game, the Ichiro connection, a lot of people are kind of rumbling about it. I think that's one that could stick out. Hmm. And they have their players in Seattle speaking out against the front office right now, saying we need to be like the Rangers, we need to spend money. Feels like there could be a little interest there. Uh, What are you hinting at as it relates to the GM search, Milliken? What have you been hinting at in your podcasting and your tweeting? People took the Kim Ang thing as me saying that's going to happen. That's not it. I think... What we've heard is there's some possible interest there, but really the one name that's continuing to get talked about, and I think it's interesting as we watch Dave Dombrowski throughout this playoff run, it's Sam Fold. And if you talk about Sam Kennedy being willing to let this thing play out here, well, hey, I think the Phillies and the Braves, those are probably the two most likely World Series winners, I think, in all of baseball. It might be till the end of October before you can really get far along that process outside of an off-day interview. All right, Sam Fold or Kim Ng, who would you rather have? I'd lean Sam Fold, uh, even though it is a first-time guy, just because I think his blend of working with Dave Nabrowski and being the right-hand man, while also being very into development, being someone Bloom valued so highly you know, in terms of seeing his vision and understanding player development, that he was going to make a manager if it wasn't for Alex Cora. But I think those two are my top two. I'd be happy with either. And if you told me they feel like they need Kim Ng for experience, yes. I'd understand. That's what I'm about to tell you. That's why I would pick her. I think She would be my pick. She's done the job. She's done it well. She's not afraid to pull off a trade, as we've seen. And also, she's got the Yankees in her background, which means she's worked in a big market she's worked in a market with pressure and attention and money and all of it and that's a real baseball boss sam fold is some guy who's gonna have to come in and split the thing with Alex cora out on that in on someone who's actually going to come in and take charge what do you think is more likely beetle i guess i would say sam fold yeah and i think that's it and i think with kim ang the one thing that makes this a little weirder they did make the playoffs and that was a major deal for miami a franchise that has struggled so badly with that I wonder if their success this year leads to her saying, I'm willing to stick around. We took a step forward. Let's figure out this contract. If they had missed and it didn't work out, but they were going pretty nuts in Miami just getting to make the wild card round. Maybe. Maybe that's where she wants to stay. I wouldn't want to stay there. I'd want to get back to a real baseball market and a real team. They could throw whatever money at you. You're going to the Red Sox. You're going to have all these things in your back pocket. What more could you ask for? Right, exactly. It's a far better situation if you're a GM. Except. Alex Cora is going to be sitting there. He's helping oh, hire you, and he's already in the dugout man. with the coaching this staff. This Cora thing's really, really a downer. Yeah, you know, the more and more you heard from Bloom, too, it's just like, I don't want to hear this guy talk anymore. It's like, like, you, you got to allow this so, kid, member of the kids' table to come play with the grown-ups. Like, what are we doing? You're, you're yeah. Just- <laughs> and there's a lot of talk with Kim Ng that what happened with the Marlins this year was a lot of luck more than anything based on the first couple of years, and their run differential was like minus 50. So it's a lot of, you know, they pulled out those close games and kind of snuck by. Unlikely People think wins. it's fluky. 
Yeah, fluky, unlikely wins. You were saying so. No, it's like, you know, okay, we, we got through a whole, what, year and a half here with listening to Bloom, and every time you heard from him, it's like the same repetitive stuff and telling you what you want to hear. It's starting to get that way with Sam Kennedy. And I know they need a front guy. I know somebody has to talk. Somebody has to answer the questions. But when they're vague like that, it's big picture stuff. And, the, you know, there's no such thing as a bad question. We have, all questions are good questions. And, you know, we got to turn over all the, all the rocks. Don't leave a rock unturned. It's... Okay, how many cooks you can have in the kitchen? Let's just get one guy and go after him and go get him. I actually think Sam yeah. Kennedy is really good at sitting up there and Telling saying you nothing. Well, yeah. You finished my sentence. Yeah. And saying absolutely nothing. Yeah. For a team that's bad and hasn't performed. He does a, a good Tom Brady in He it. does a good job at it's saying Brady. absolutely nothing. He'll give you a 20-minute presser, but, like, okay, we don't know anything. He's great at using words and having them mean very little. Um, again, we're, we're, we're not going to get into specific, uh, yeah. smiling. I mean, we're all friends here. Oh, we're you know, happy, that's such happy, a great happy. question. Hey, oh, baseball. Oh, right yeah. Yeah. Hey, enjoy <laughs> the lunch. You look great today. Listen, the team blows yeah. and he does a good job of just sitting up there and taking it and like smiling. Well, someone needs to be that punching bag. Chuckling in a way yeah. like, yeah, it's not, it, uh, you guys know baseball. Come on. Yeah. He'd be a great hire as a front man for a really bad yeah. company. Like, what's that called? Monorail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, I know that the tanker spilled millions of gallons of oil and we're killing wildlife everywhere. But let me tell you guys something. We've just bought so much Dawn detergent. We're going to take care of this thing in no time. The birds are going to be great. Like, ducks will be fine. Just think like disaster, right? Complete disasters that you need the front man for. He'd be great for that. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Oil spills, uh, uh, hernia mesh. What are the, all those commercials for all the oh, bad things people uh, deal uh, with? Uh, the, the water. Uh, if you've been to Camp Lejeune. Uh, Camp Lejeune, Camp Lejeune, Lejeune water. The water. Mesothelioma. Uh, like, this guy could get up there and be like, well, yeah. you know, it does cause cancer, but, you know, we're going to yeah, we're gonna do yeah. something good, though. If you, you or any of your children oh, swam at Quincy's Beach during that red tide we had last year. <laughs> they should put him out there for everything. Red Sox are a dumpster fire, and this guy goes up there and he does a pretty decent job of smiling. The only thing he got upset about was when they asked if people would not want to come to Boston because of the chorus situation and what they have in place. Yeah. The only time in that presser, and then following that, a couple hours later, Alex Spear drops a piece saying there's guys, executives around the league that see Cora as the elephant in the room, and they believe beyond that. So the Eddie Ramirez, the Raquels, this top, decision maker level they need fresh voices in there as well and that's something apparently people are talking about and saying they're just not willing to change much except the face they continue to keep the same structure in place there but he pushed back on that uh yeah he's going out and telling you that this is where you want to be if you want to be a baseball executive because nobody cares more except the manager gets to come into the meetings and decide things with you uh, which would be just so ridiculously annoying while continuing to say, you know, one day I'd like to lead a front office, and not right now, but I'd be happy to do it here if I thought I was ready right now. And I'm not ready. His comments haven't really helped his case. What do you said? He's telling you exactly what it is. I don't feel like I'm exactly ready yet, but if I did feel like I was ready, yeah, I'd be willing to do it. When you have to what tell is, your bosses. Mean? What does that mean? And, and was he asked was the other question. And according to some, he wasn't even asked. He came to them. But that tells you all you need to know, that he felt like, oh, I got to reject them before they bring it up. They want the same thing as well. They are all Team Alex Cora.